Hello, Dr. Pisi here, the leader and commander of the Ypsilon Army. Today I will be presenting you with Lua controlled missiles. Somebody in the comments asked for this and I didn't re reply, reply that I do not feel I'm proficient enough with them to under any circumstances do a tutorial. However, tonight I decided let's look into them and now after a few hours of, hours of think tinkering I believe I can give you the most basic bare bones tutorial to make the first functional Lua controlled missile. Which is rather exciting, isn't it? So, what we have, let's go ahead and start with the hardware. What you want to do is have a missile launch pad, as you might have guessed, right? Just get it the right way around, thank you very much. And the right color. Now, then you want to, there to be a missile controller. There is no need to have an AI, however, a missile controller is definitely needed. Now you need to add a Lua trans transceiver, as you, I guess that's how we pronounce it, not quite sure, and add it to the missile block. Make sure it's connected to a launch pad. Now, next step is to add, let's say, three missile blocks over here. There we go, maybe add a fourth one just to be safe. Now, here we have this missile. Now there is one component we need, anything else is optional. And it is the Lua receiver but we will now that's once you have that which you should probably put quite up for, quite forward because it has a very low base drag however now we're, let's go ahead and add two fins at the back do you feel uh, actually um, we'll have one short range thruster Two fuel tanks. Lua receiver. And a fragmentation warhead. That's all we need. This is a functional missile now. And it's really all we need to do. However now, if we just launch it by itself, which is where many of you seem to be stuck at, is it does this. It flies towards, I believe it could be zero, 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 or just nothing. In any case, it's not flying towards the enemy, that's for sure. So what do we need to do to make it so that the lower control is actually affecting the missile? Well, let's get the, our code over here. In the update function, I want you to do two for loops for each Lua transceiver and every missile. This will allow to control, allow you to control all the missiles you, your ship is launching that have Lua control at the same time. So far, let's call this the um, let's call this trans transceiver. That's going to be for T equals zero. Okay, so we're creating a for loop here. So first we are declaring a variable t, which we start at zero. And every time we run this loop, the t is going to get up by, by one. And it will do so until it has it hits the transceiver count of the ship. Then we will do another for loop inside this one, creating basically a two-dimensional field of Vari of variations we will be checking each and every frame. Be careful with for loops because they can really affect the performance. We will call this M for missile. Now, we are doing the same thing with M, however, now what we are actually counting is how many missiles does the transceiver T actually control. 
And remember, once they have both transceiver and a Lua receiver, it becomes a controlled missile and it counts towards this, towards this counter. However, right now we have these two variables which we will be using in just a few moments. First, we, what we want to do is actually get on uh, the position of our enemy. We will call this POS. There we go. So what we are doing here is getting the target info for mainframe zero, which is the first mainframe that you have put in the ship, and of that uh, the first target. Because we have a target prioritization card in our uh, mainframe, this uh, zero is going to refer to the highest priority target, which is what we want. If we don't have it, it's going to be the first target detected, I believe. That kind of gets a little bit messy and it does not ignore salvage if you have this and it's There are problems with it, which is why you should usually have a target prioritization card, prioritization card unless you are doing some much more advanced, you know, creating a table of all the targets and finding what is best for your particular missile. But right now we don't need that, we're just looking for the one single enemy and this is going to do that beautifully. Then we're getting the position, which I will actually spell correctly, after a few tries. <laughs> There we go. Yes, indeed, that is correct. I had to check. Goodness me. So now we have the position of it in the POS variable. Now, what we are going to next do is a very simple command. That's actually all we are going to be doing. The very only command we are using today that's missile specific. So let's go. And that's it. That's literally all we need to do. So what we're saying here is, uh, we are calling the function set lower controlled missile aim point, basically where the internal fins are going to be trying to get the missile to. Uh, the missile we are referring to is the T, which whatever, because we're going to do this thing for each and every single transceiver of which each and every single missile count missile. They we will be going through every single missile this way by having this T and M over here. Then we will get this position we got here, uh, so we are aiming at this position of the target. That's what we are saying here, and that's literally it. So now, what we have to now with let's test this. Let's go ahead and have our first target. I call that Epsilon. Let's take the first basic stationary Epsilon decoy and activate the enemy simulator. There we go. Now it is actually reg registering as an enemy. So once we launch the missile, you can see it immediately turning towards the enemy, and because it's stationary, it is going to hit directly at the position of the target, which I believe is the first block you placed. Now, if you can, you can just spam these missiles, and they will find their way to the target. Now, you might be asking, how efficient is such a simple algorithm? Because you know, you might have looked at the forums, and they have had crazy eight lines long systems for detecting and uh, doing all kinds of crazy things to the missiles, uh, making crazy circle pattern patterns and whatnot. Which is really cool stuff and I will be covering that once I've actually figured it out. That's the idea of a basic tutorial, it's uh, what gets you started. So, no, well, let me show you. Let's go ahead and have a fairly, you know, common enemy. Let's have a... Where are they? I'm looking for a very specific... Yes, hoplites, indeed, hoplites. They are very, they're very cute, they're very effective. Let's go ahead and see how we can do against one of those. As you can see, we are doing actually fairly well. That being said, those mines can be kind of devastating because this is not supposed to be an armored station. It's not supposed to be in a fight ever. Like ever. In any situation at all. It's not where it's, it's, it's not comfortable here. At all. However, it still did manage to beat the hoplite. Proving that our system works. I wish I could actually show you the target prioritization. I guess I could show you it, couldn't I? Let's go ahead and improve upon our design here. 
by adding another missile that's exactly the same. Basically we are going to double our firepower, which should help us take on some more enemies of different kinds. Let's see, is this thing connected? Yes, F fantastic, it looks very much connected. And let's have a third one over here. Could we have four? I don't believe so, no. However, we can indeed have this here, and now it's this thing is connected, yes. And now, these three should all go for the same target, and this is making me much more comfortable with my firepower. Let's move the, move the fortress up a little so that we could possibly get out of mine range too. That should probably do it. Let's go ahead and spawn us two hoplites. Let's, yeah, let's spawn two hoplites and see how these guys are now working. As you can see, it took a little while, but it did find a target. The target prioritization is working. It hit the target. Let's go ahead and launch this next one. And yes, you could actually have a staggered fire and it would work be beautifully. However, that is one target down. I believe we should now be actually prioritizing the other one because it's bigger. Indeed we are. And that's how these things work. Isn't it beautiful? Yes it is. And it is only two, it took you less than four, 15 minutes to figure this thing out. So yes, thank you very much for watching and please put a like in the video and maybe make it a comment, comment down in the comment section if you want me to really work hard to get the advanced and expert tutorials on Lua controlled missiles out as soon as possible. But right now, this was the basic tutorial. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.